Hello, good people of YouTube. My name is Misha. I'm a freelance DevOps engineer. And my last video on how to use NeoVim with dev containers has been doing quite well. It has gotten 5.2k views. And many of the comments were asking about my Nix setup. So in the video, I hinted that when running dev containers on my ARM Mac, it didn't work. It didn't. This setup that I created didn't work when I was running them directly on my ARM Mac. And I found a way to solve this by using the Nix package manager. So if that's interesting to you, stay tuned. I'm going to explain everything about it. Um, so why won't this work? Well, if you go to the brew documentation, here it says that ARM is unsupported. So you, you can't run ARM on, you can't run homebrew on Linux on ARM. You can run brew on macOS on ARM, but not in Linux. So when you're using a dev container, you are spinning up a Linux container on your macOS, and therefore you are running within a Linux system on an ARM chip, and therefore you can't use brew. Sorry if that's complicated, but that's how it, that's what it is. Because I was just, I had my, my nice setup, I was running it on my Kubernetes cluster, and my Kubernetes cluster is just normal AMD uh, 64. It's just normal, ch normal chips, not ARM chips. And then I was running my same dev container on my Mac here using the Docker provider, and then did work. So let's uh, maybe I should explain a bit about providers in DevPod. So the DevPod CLI has this DevPod provider list, and these are the de the current providers I have configured in in DevPod. So you can have the Docker provider, and this is the Kubernetes provider, and this one points directly to my Kubernetes home lab. There are also providers for Azure, for example, where it will create a VM in Azure for you, or, or you have to point it to an existing VM, and then your dev pods run on that VM. These are all different providers. Now, my Kubernetes provider is running on normal AMD chips. So there I, I had no problem. But when I use the Docker provider, so I'm running the dev pods on my local MacBook, then it wouldn't work because brew doesn't work. And then I wasn't able to use NeoVim in my dev container. So I fixed it. Um, I needed to fix this because sometimes I want to run environments that contain things that I don't want in my Kubernetes cluster, perhaps. And I, I, wa I wanted to have the freedom to be able to run these dev pods with my dot files on my Mac if I wanted to. So I, I figured it out. Um, I, I Basically, I needed a new way of installing NeoVim. That's what it was all about. But I also installed different packages, so I needed a bit more. Like I could have written my whole uh, like a, a, a list for apt, but I wanted something more generic that I could use in multiple containers. Well, Nix had been recommended to me many times by many people. They, they said, oh, you will really like Nix because they see my videos, they see how I approach things. And when I saw this, I was immediately super excited, but I very purposely waited with going into Nix because <laughs> I knew this was going to be a huge rabbit hole. So uh, Nix is a tool for system configuration and package management. And I I live streamed when I went into it. You can find it on the YouTube channel. I spent like four hours digging into Nix and and what it's all about. And I'm yeah super impressed by it. I think it's an amazing tool and a, an amazing approach to things. I love the fact that you can create declarative environments. You can basically have your whole OS in code, and you can use. Uh, the Nix shell to just run a temporary environment with a few packages you want to try out and it will download the packages for you and then you can exit the shell and then everything is gone. It is it is amazing. But I, I so I, I, I went through the, the learn, I went into how to install it, the first steps and how it all works. And very quickly I was starting to get very lost in the weeds and like it, like Nix has its own entire language. It is an entire programming language, and 
it can do so much more than what I actually needed it for, right? I, what I needed was um, a tool that I can give a list of packages that will install those packages in Linux container environments. That's what I needed to have. And <laughs> I really wanted to dive deeper into this and I was getting really distracted. But I, then in those moments, I need to reset. I need to establish like what what am I actually trying to achieve here? Because this whole config management thing can be such a deep rabbit hole. So I did the tutorial. I I, I did realize that the documentation is very dense. It's It's pretty difficult to find what you need actually. Uh, I started to get lost in the weeds. But luckily I managed to find after a lot of digging and sort of fumbling around, I found this, build an environment. In I, I will, I will add, put the link in the description for this. But this was sort of buried deep in the documentation. There was no clear, there, there was no clear way for me to search how to install a list of packages with Nix, but I figured it out. So this is how you can install a list of packages with Nix. And this is what I implemented in my devbot setup. So I will um, I will show you how I've done it. Um, I will go into this lab th uh, that I created, but so this this directory I created in my in my lab repo. This contains a devcontainer.json. So I'm just going to open that, and here we see that I am. It's a very simple one. I am basically just pulling in a base Debian dev container image from Microsoft, and I am pulling in a dev container feature that installs the Nix package manager for me. That's all I'm doing in this dev container. So let me just show you like this, it, when you go to dev containers and then images, this is these are all the base images that you can get for dev containers. And if you go to SRC, here you see all these different base Debian, base Ubuntu, there's Go for Go environment, Java, Python, and so forth. So this is where you get the base images from. I picked the base Debian, and here they will show you how to use this image. This, this is what I use. So I'm just pulling in a, a, a dev container image that, con that has uh, a certain set of features already baked in, and then I'm adding this features Nix. So let me show you that. Um, let's see, uh, containers.dev slash features. This is the entire list of features that you can install in your dev containers. And if you then search for Nix, then here you see there is a feature to install the Nix package manager. So that's that's all this does. It spins up a a base Debian image and it installs the dev container.json. Uh, it's it installs the Nix package manager. So if I now go uh, dev pod up here. So here's the command I'm going to use. Uh, we will write devpod up dot, so in the current directory, provider docker. So I'm not using the Kubernetes provider. I'm using my the provider that's running on my Mac OS here. And I'm pointing it to my dot files devpod.git repository. Now, on my system, I have configured this to be the default. I don't have to do this every time. I can just write this bit here until provider docker, but I'm just doing it for the sake of completion here. So when I run this, it is going to create a dev container and you see that it's installing, now it's installing uh, Nix packages, you see? Now it is installing Nix packages and it takes a, a, a little moment, but now it's already done, it's already done. So if I do devpod ls now, here I see my Nix demo devpod, so devpod sh and then Nix demo. Now I'm in my dev container. Now I'm in my 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 dev pod in my dev container that contains all of the packages that I have set up in my in my dot files repo. 
So for example, you can see I'm in workspaces next demo. And if I do cat Etsy OS release, I'm running on Debian GNU Linux. If I do that in a new shell here, cat Etsy OS release, you won't get anything. So I'm on Mac OS. So here I'm in Debian and for example, if I do RGIU, then ripgrep is being activated. So like the, the normal base Debian image does not contain ripgrep, but because I have that in my dot files, ripgrep is already here. FCF is here. And of course, Vim is here, or NeoVim. If I do V, now it will install my entire Dot my entire setup, it's going to set up my Vim editor exactly as I like it. And I can uh, customize that using the lazy Vim extras. So how does this look like in that, that, that dot files repo? So here's this uh, repo that I have, dot files dev pod. And this contains a few things, but I will show you by using Vim. So, so dot files devpod so here first of all we have my nvim directory so that contains all of the configuration for for nvim i have some scripts that i like to use there is the setup script but most importantly here is the config.nix so let's check that out config.nix and this is what we saw in the documentation earlier over here which I will copy for you. So this is build an environment. This is what you uh, define here. And here I just define all of the packages that I want to have available in my dev container at all times. So I want Go to be there, Starship for my prompt, FD, RipGrab, LazyGit, kubectl, k9s, all of that stuff I want to have in my dev container at all times. So then in my setup script, here I'm doing a couple of things differently from the previous one I showed. Again, I'm creating the xtg config home.config. Conf home and in there, I'm creating a Nix packages directory. I, of course, create my nvim directory and symlink that to the dot files. I set up my bash rc, but here you see that I am creating this config.nix file in the xtg config home slash nix packages. And then after I've set up the file, the files, I just run one command, nix env ia nix packages dot my packages. That's it. That's all it does. So this command takes this config.nix and installs all of the packages that I define in that file. Super simple. So again, config.nix. This contains a list of files that I have, or list of packages that I want to install. And then in my setup script, I put that file in the right place and I run this command to install all of the packages in the list. Very simple. And, and very similar to what I was doing with brew. So um, why do this? Why not just do... Uh, wh why even bother with dev containers? Why not? Why not just go for Nix all the way? Well, there are a few, couple of things. Um, first of all, Nix seems to have a very high learning curve. It, it seems I, 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 I spent four hours on it, and this is what I came up with. And still, I don't really, I don't really grasp um, the refined, more refined elements of, of Nix. So high learning curve. And secondly, dev containers have a specification. So if I go to dev containers here, dev containers have a specification. This is defined by Microsoft. You can see it here by Microsoft, but it has a specification and therefore it is going to be applicable in a broad range of environments. Nix OS you're not go likely to find Nix OS on in a large uh, enterprise or corporate environment, right? 
dev containers, however, like VS Code is now moving towards dev containers uh, completely. So there's, you can really see that VS Code is going to be optimized for use with dev containers, which means that dev containers are probably here to stay and that it's going to have a wide uh, set of applications. It has a wide area where you can use it in. It is much more likely that you are going to be working in a team where they are working with dev containers and therefore the dev container.json instead of a full NixOS environment. So my point is, like if I'm working on a project and if I if I if I'm working on a say I'm I'm I start coding and I I want I want to be working on a project. I want to be using that with my regular my own set of dot files in an easy manner. Now, all I need for that project is to request to add this feature to the dev container.json and I can pull in my entire opinionated way of running NeoVim in my dev container with all of my configuration, all the packages that I want. I just need to ask, submit a pull request, add this feature into the dev container JSON, and everything works. That's much more simple than uh, coming in and saying, no, I, I, I think we should move to NixOS, and you have to explain to everybody that everybody should start using NixOS, and nobody's one, going to want to do it, and it's going to be a super annoying <laughs> discussion to have. So this way, you sort of circumvent that. So if you are, if you are going to, if you want to, if you want your environment to be compatible with many different places, if you want to use your NeoVim everywhere, then I think this is a, a, a good route to go instead of going all in on NixOS. That's basically why I, I do it. Uh, and I think containers in general have a wider uh, mode of application than, than NixOS. That doesn't mean that I am not going to go deeper into NixOS at some point. I do want to build a full uh, system sometime. I, I really enjoyed my Arch Linux uh, build the other, when I was daily driving Linux. And I am very intrigued by Nix, so I, I will do a full build of my own and just try it out. But for now, what I'm using it for is a simple package manager in my dev containers. And there is the NixOS packages re repository. So if I search for Flux here, then here you see Flux CD. There is the CLI. And then I just add this to my list of packages and it's available to, my, to me in my dev container. I can also do this uh, in, my, in my dev container. There's dot files. And if I go in my config.nix and dot files, and let's say I want to add another package. So what package shall we add? Uh, let's see. Does it give any popular packages? Well, let's. I have no idea what Fluxus is, but let's say we want to add Fluxus. All I need to do then is to just run my dot files setup script again. And then it's going to install what I have added to my list of packages. Super easy. So this way I can also very quickly modify my environment from container to container and add packages that I only want in that container. So it is a very versatile way of managing your config in containerized environments while still retaining the ability to use NeoVim. So that's my, my, my current solution. Now I can run my dev pods on macOS, on Kubernetes, on ARM, everywhere. It works super well. Uh, it's going to be my solution for the time to come, but I am also always looking to improve. So if you have further suggestions or things I should look into, please let me know in the comments and let me know if you enjoyed this video. All the best of luck with your DevPod setup. See you next time.